morning, George. Good morning, Steve. The commissioner said you wanted to see me. Yes, our elusive friend Ekman is in this country. Ekman? Don't tell me he's still floating around. Well, you know him as well as I do. Part-time foreign agent, part-time international information peddler. He's smooth and tough. Yeah, he's been in our hair a long time. What's he doing in the States? That's what I want you to find out. We know one thing. Ekman wouldn't be connected with the thing unless it was big. And right now, that's what mystifies me. What do you mean? Well, why do you suppose Ekman would want to steal an old Civil War map? <laughs> you know, for a moment I thought you said... Uh, you, you heard me. That's what I said. A Civil War map yet? Are you kidding? He stole it from the home of a Colonel Carruthers in Richmond just this morning. Yeah, but I still don't see why a Civil War map would be... Neither do I. That's why you're going to Richmond. Steve, there's a special plane waiting. You'll be there in a couple of hours. Talk to Colonel Carruthers. And then go where you have to and do what you have to do to find out what this is all about. Well, that's it, Steve. You've got your assignment. Good luck. Well, I've had a lot of screwball assignments in my time, but this one takes the cake. Lasso a slippery foreign agent named Ekman and try to find out why he swiped a Civil War map. I suppose the next thing I'll find out is that I'm up against a plot to blow up Chesapeake Bay. Two hours and 20 minutes later, I arrive in Richmond. I head for Colonel Carruthers' place outside the city. Yes, sir? Colonel Carruthers? Mr. Mitchell, I presume? That's right, Steve Mitchell, Colonel. Well, come right in, Mr. Mitchell. Come right in, sir. Sit down. Sit Thank you. down, sir. Are you any relation to Randolph uh, Mitchell of the South Carolina Mitchells? Well, not to my knowledge, Colonel. Well, that's too bad, sir. A splendid family, splendid in a true Southern tradition. Well, I'm sure they are. Uh, Colonel, they sent me down here. Yeah, they told me over the telephone, but I must confess I'm a bit puzzled why they'd send a man from Washington to investigate such a minor theft, Mr. Mitchell. But then the things they do in Washington have puzzled me for quite a spell now. Mm. Well, we were wondering if you could give us any reason why a foreign agent would want to steal an old map of a battle in the Civil War. Uh, Mr. Mitchell, mm -hmm. we in the South always refer to the incident which you have just mentioned as the war between the states. Oh, I'm sorry, Colonel. As an historian, I've always held that uh, had conditions been a little different, we in the South... Well, there's no doubt about it, but uh, exactly what did this map show? It had to do with the Battle of Fredericksburg, sir. Uh, the Confederate troops under the command of Colonel... Indeed they were. What was the date? Uh, December 1862. It began just before sunup. It was a miracle of military strategy, Colonel. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, this map was uh, just a rough sketch, but it was actually used by our army, and that made it of value to a collector. I see. Uh, did you know this man, Ekman? He was a scoundrel, sir. Passed himself off to me as a Mr. Claiborne, defaming a fine old Southern name. Oh, what was he doing here? Well, he claimed to be writing a book on the Battle of Fredericksburg. And I remember thinking it was rather strange at the time. What was strange? Why, because this year book here on the same subject was published a month ago. One in which uh, <coughs> my relics and research appear quite prominently. Uh, but to get back to this... Uh, Ekman. Uh, yes, he, he wanted to browse through my books and relics. Now it happened that I was dressing up to look like uh, uh, Colonel Jeb Stewart for a masquerade ball we were given, so I let him. And about an hour later, after I finished uh, varnishing up the visor of my cap, I, <laughs> I discovered that the map was missing and that scoundrel with him. I don't get it. Uh, would you uh, care to see what the map looked like, sir? Have you got another one? Well, I haven't got a copy of it, sir, except in this book. It was just one original map, of course. Uh, it's on page 263, uh, approximately. Uh, oh, here, just in passing, sir, there's a picture of that fine southern gentleman, Colonel Jeb Stewart, has a picture taken of a cavalry charge. That's very interesting, Colonel, but the map... And there, sir, there is a picture of a genuine mini. Mini who? Uh, mini, uh, it's a name for cannonball, sir. Uh, but the map, Colonel, please. Uh, here, and there, sir. Oh, no, that's somebody else's relic. <coughs> uh, oh, here. There we are, sir. Now, uh, why would a foreign agent want to steal that? Well, perhaps a man made a mistake, sir. No, Ekman doesn't make many mistakes, Colonel. 
What's this little scrawl here in the corner? Oh, that's the name of the man who made the map. Yeah, a Frenchman named Cartier. Yes, he uh, fought for the great cause during the war. Great friend of my daddy's. In fact, it was his great-grandson who gave me the map. Mm, I see. Yes, Bill Carter comes from a fine old Richmond family. Carter? Cartier? Uh, well, the name was changed a little during the years. <laughs> you know, I imagine Bill was trying to sugar me up a little with the gift of that map so he could ask for my granddaughter Juliana's hand in marriage. <laughs> I, I see. One thing more, Colonel. Yes, sir. Do you remember how this man Ekman came out here? Oh, yeah, came in a taxi cab. Taxi cab? Yeah. Well, that's a lead. A lead, sir? Hey, I'm as much in the dark about this as I was before. I don't know what the reason was, but there must be a reason for Ekman to steal that map, and I've got to find out what the reason is. But first, I've got to find Ekman. Yeah, I see. Well, Colonel? Hmm. Well, you, uh, you won't stay and have a little libation with me, sir? <laughs> no, thank you, sir. Goodbye, Colonel. Good day. Uh. Two hours later, when the train from Richmond pulls out, I'm on board. I spend $25 for taxis and tips, but according to the taxi driver who took him to his hotel and the starter who sent his cab to the station and the ticket agent at the depot, Ekman is somewhere aboard this train. Thank you. Conductor, take a look at those. What can I do for you, Mr. Mitchell? Sit down, if you get a minute. Conductor, I'm looking for a man named Ekman. I believe he's aboard this train. Ekman? You know what uh, sort of accommodations he has? No, there you got me. Well, of course, if he's in the chair car, we wouldn't have a record of his name. Doesn't seem to be on our list of compartments or drawing room. Well, he uses several aliases. He used one this morning in Richmond. Claiborne. Claiborne? No. Got a description of him? Yeah. Pretty general. That's the trouble. Ekman has a face you could lose in any kind of a crowd. He's made a fortune by looking like that. Got a pretty good crowd for him to get lost in this trip. Pretty full, huh? Yes. However, I'll uh, pass this information on to the waiters and the porters. I'll check with you if I find out anything. Fine. Uh, by the way, we're going straight through to Miami, huh? That's right. Does that make sense? <laughs> this uh, Ekman, think he'd be headed that way? Timbuktu, Miami, right now. Nothing makes sense in this deal. Well, make yourself at home in the club car, Mr. Mitchell. Thank you. I shouldn't sit and drink alone. It just doesn't look right. Of course, I haven't got a drink. Bartender? Well, now you're not alone. You probably think it's real brazen of me to talk to a man I don't know. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Life on a train is usually rather informal, Miss... Uh... Uh, Miss Forsythe, my first name is Zoe. <laughs> Steve Mitchell. Now, isn't that one? One what? I just knew your name would be Stevie. <laughs> This girl like me needs friends wherever she is. Helpless? Oh, but I really am, Stevie. Why, you wouldn't believe it, but I can't even seem to get that little old door on my compartment lock. Compartment B, that is. Oh? No, so I just can't make it work right. Isn't that awful? Well, uh... As a matter of fact, I think I'll go try it again, but I just know I can't manage to make it work right. Maybe sooner or later I'll find me some nice man who can help me. I don't doubt it. I'll be seeing you. Quite a number, friend. Hmm? I say, uh, little lady, uh, quite a looker, isn't she? <laughs> She's looking all right. Uh, Cully's the name. John J. Cully, Acme Button Company. Mitchell's mine. So uh, you sell buttons, huh? 
Well, I, I don't give them away. <laughs> yes, I expect I've sold an average of two-thirds of a button to every man, woman, and child in this country. Well, that's quite a record, but what good is two-thirds of a button? Hey, you're pretty quick on the uptake, aren't you? <laughs> oh, I'm card. Yes, you ought to be shuffled and cut. <laughs> yes, sir, I, I guess I've sold buttons in every state in the Union. <laughs> The uh, zipper hasn't got you scared, huh? Well, see, you know, that used to be a pretty nasty word to me. But the way I got it figured out now, it's a big world, friend. There's room for the zipper and the button. Well, that's reassuring. Yes, as our president said to me not over a week ago, he said, J.J., go out, go out and button up the whole world. Say, that's a great thought. Oh, yeah, it's very inspiring. Excuse me, Mr. Cully. Sure thing, friend. One of the porters tells me that a man answering this general description is in drawing room D in the next car forward. Oh. He has reservations under the name of Pettibone. Might be the man you're looking for. Thanks. Blossom. <laughs> I thought your compartment was B. Oh, it is, but when Mr. Pettibone was kind enough to invite me in for a little old drink. Where is Mr. Pettibone? He just went back to my compartment to get my cigarettes for me. My stars! You're not Ekman. Ekman? Of course not. I'm Pettibone. But if you're a process server or a private detective... Oh, great. Good evening and thank you, Mr. Pettibone. same man? That's right. Any luck? Yeah, all bad. I may have a lead for you. Yeah? The waiter just told me that a man answering this description ordered his dinner sent into compartment G. Same car. Just after we left Richmond. Okay, I'll try again. Thanks. tobacco, but Ekman isn't carrying any cigarettes. He's not carrying any Civil War map either. That looks like now I'll never know why he swiped it. Oh, here you are. Any idea who killed Ekman? No. I came down the passageway shortly after you did. There was no one in sight. That means the killer couldn't have gotten very far. Who have the nearby compartments? There's Miss Forsyth and B. The uh, Southern Bell. Yes, and uh, Mrs. Williamson, elderly lady, is in C. Mr. Pettibone is in D, and the people in E and F are in the club car. Oh, no, I'm worse off than ever. No, I don't know who's got them, man. I do. Oh. You have. Hey. That's it, all right. Where'd you get it? from the steward. Ekman gave it to the steward to lock in the dining car safe. I thought I'd better take a look and see what is in it. What's so important about it? There you've got me. Just a rough sketch drawn 90 years ago by a guy by the name of Cartier. Now. So. 
Now I've got it, but I still don't get it. Did you lock Ekman's compartment? Yeah. Well, now that my head stopped jumping around, I'd like to take a look around there, see if I can find something that might give me a lead. I'll be with you as soon as I make up a wire to Miami. I'll meet you in 10 minutes in Ekman's compartment. That'll give me time to have a little talk with the Southern Bell. Well, I say. Hello, Zoe. I just bet you finally came to see if you can help me fix this little old lock on my door. Not exactly. How long did you stay at Pettibone's after I left, Zoe? Only a minute or two, Stevie. Why do you ask? A little while ago, a man was murdered a couple of compartments from there. Murdered? You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Of course. A murder? The things that can happen on a train. Yeah, the things that can happen on a train. Have you got a cigarette? <laughs> I just remember. I'm all out. I see. Well, I'll see you later. Oh, you're sure not going to leave so soon, now, are you? Be brave, honey child. At this point, it looks like the trail is heating up. That whiff of Turkish tobacco I noticed in Zoe's compartment is the same I spotted in Ekman's, which ties Zoe into the deal. But before I can do anything about her, I've got to find out what the deal is. We go over Ekman's compartment with a fine-tooth comb, and finally I spot something. Hey, lining's torn. What have you got? Letter from Havana addressed to Ekman. Signed by a guy by the name of Corelli. Mentioning certain interests that will pay for proof. Proof of what? Doesn't say. Well, do you think this uh, Civil War map has any uh, connection with this thing? It could be the proof that that Corelli mentions. But proof of what? Hey, wait a minute. We get to Miami in the morning, don't we? Yes. Just a short hop by plane to Havana. I got a hunch that Corelli's going to have a call paid on him by Ekman's partner. But Ekman is dead? Mm-hmm. You know who his partner is? No. Me. police promised to keep an eye on Zoe, so I grab a hop to Havana, check in at my hotel, and send word to Corelli at the address I found on the letter in Ekman's pocket. It isn't long before I get results. Corelli? Yes. Who are you? Friend of Ekman. That is easy to say, but difficult to prove. Ekman has no friends. Where is he? Somebody caught up with him. He's dead. You killed him. But no matter. So now you want to make a deal. What is it you have to sell me? Don't you know? Of course. The question is, do you? The map of the Battle of Fredericksburg. You are too smart to have it with you. Wrong, Corelli but big enough to hold on to it till I get my price. There is only one price. $10,000 American from the interests I represent, another $10,000 from the Altraz family. The Altraz family? Maybe it's worth more dough than I thought. I would advise you strongly not to try to bargain. Any further delay might ruin the entire transaction. All right, I'll let you know in a couple of hours. I will return at 8.30. And if you do not have the map for me, I'm sure the parties I represent will have something for you. I will not insult your intelligence by telling you what. Get me Washington. LD-541. At last, I've got a lead, or rather a name, the Altraz family. I put in a call to the commissioner's office and ask for a check on them. Then I go downstairs to dinner. When I get 
back. My answer's waiting for me. Hello? Well, we drew a blank on the first name you gave us. Plenty on file about the Altraz family. Okay, George, let's have it. The Altraz family has been a thorn in our side for some time. Especially Mrs. Altraz. She owns some property in the Middle East that has a chromite mine on it. That's the stuff they use in making steel, isn't it? Yeah, it's in short supply and getting shorter. We need all we can get. We wanted to lease the mine from her, but she'd already leased it to unfriendly interests. Her husband was willing to go along, but she said no. She owns the land, so there you are. I see. How did Mrs. Altraz get the land in the first place? According to our information, she inherited it from her great uncle, whose only son was lost to sea on the way to America. So old Mr. Cartier left the land to Mrs. Altraz. And, uh, did you say Cartier? Mrs. Altraz's maiden name. Does it ring a bell? A fire alarm. And where there's a fire alarm, there's usually smoke. Well, that's one way of putting it. Anything more I can do to help? I'm afraid you're too far away right now, George. What? I'll check with you later. I hope. All right, Zoe. You can come out now. You got the wrong party, friend. And there's just one more thing. I have to button up you. And I can do it very nicely with just one slug. Reach in your pocket real gentle. I can pull out that map and hand it over. You know, it took me a long time to figure out why that map was so valuable to Mrs. Altraz and the Middle Eastern interests that she rents that mining land to. The map proves that she doesn't own the land, right? Right. That's quite an interesting little piece of paper, isn't it, Fred? <laughs> it sure is. You know, she inherited that from old Cartier when he thought that his only son was lost at sea on the way to America. But he reached America, and he drew that map, and he signed it with a date. And he's got a lot of direct descendants right now living in Richmond, Virginia. Take young Bill Carter, for instance. He's the one that gave the map to old Colonel Carruthers. So you're a bright boy, aren't you, friend? Got it all figured out. Too late. You killed Ekman, too, huh? Merely to increase the profits. Originally, it was going to be a three-way split. You, Corelli, and Ekman. Now it's a two-way split, huh? Mm -mm. One-way split. I'll be gone before Corelli arrives. Hey, you're a real go-getter. That explains the Turkish tobacco smell in Ekman's compartment. You were leaving, you heard the conductor coming down the passageway, so you ducked into another compartment, Zoe's. She was with Pettibone at the time. Now, look, friend, Storin's not going to do you any good. I'll just trot out that map and hand it over. <laughs> I haven't got it on me. You won't give me that. I've been over these rooms. <laughs> you haven't been as thorough as you thought, button boy. It's over there. No sale. I've been through those drawers. You weren't quite as thorough as you thought you were there, button boy. You see, it's taped to the top of the partition between the drawers. I think it's in that drawer right there. <laughs> OK, I'll get it. No, you won't. Uh, not so fast. You may have a gun in there yourself. I'll get it. Up. Golly. Corelli. Is this another double cross? Oh, now, Corelli, you know me. We're friends of long years standing. I wouldn't double cross you. What's the matter? Did I hurt the little patty? Oh, now, look, look, friend. Maybe we can make a deal. <laughs> You're through dealing, button boy. The cars just got stacked against you. I'm sure when the Carters back in Virginia hear that they own that mining land, they'll be glad to deal with my government. You know, when you were little, you learned to play that game wrong. What do you mean? Button, button. Who's got the button? Me. Okay, here we go. 